Days 37 and 38 along the 88 Temple Pilgrimage of Shikoku are in the books, but they were a bit exhausting and they were a bit stressful. Day 37 started off heading towards Temple Number 60, Yokuminenji, and Yokuminenji is a spectacular temple. It, especially the hike up to it, it's a 10-kilometer hike up to Yokuminenji. The first eight kilometers are along an old winding road. I think maybe two cars came up all morning. And as you climb up it, there are almost no houses because you're really tight in this valley along the river. And each bend you take, like the mountains get ba farther back and farther back and farther back and farther back. It's kind of like peeling a lemon. It's really quite intense. The last two kilometers are a 500 meter ascent. It's a brutal uphill climb for the last two kilometers. It's a Nansho temple or a difficult temple and it really is quite difficult to get to. In the morning, I saw a couple of Ohenru who I had had dinner with the night before and we passed each other a few times and then we all made it up to the temple about the same time. And there was good cheer among all of us. Quite a few car couples at the temple. So there was a little bit of bustle at the temple. Not a lot of um, bus pilgrims, but someone almost always praying as you visit the temple now. I thought the descent going down to Temple 61 would be just a all downhill because it was all uphill going to Temple 60. But the first 4K were walking along a ridge line and going down and up and down and up. It was not as easy as I thought. The last 6K is a constant down, but the first 4K are down, up, down, up, and it was pretty uh, tiring. And going down, all the signs led to the Okonoin of Temple 61, which I hadn't visited yet, but I visited the Okonoin, which was the temple itself, kind of almost like a house converted into a temple, but it was called White Waterfall Temple, and about 100 meters up from the temple was this waterfall with statue of Fudo over it that you can stand under and do some waterfall training. Way too cold for me to do such a thing, but it was a beautiful spot to do it, and there's a good platform, and it looked pretty safe if you wanted to do such a thing there. I then headed down and headed to 61. There are four temples a few kilometers apart. The stress of the day was wondering if I could make it all the way to Temple 64 in time before it closed. Uh, I cut my break short but not sort of the reading of the sutras I, and filming. I tried to carry out as I had at other temples and then just try to walk more quickly between the temples. I made it to the last temple with 10 minutes to spare. You got to get there by five if you want your book signed. So I got there, got my book signed and then visited the temple. Uh, it was really quite a large temple and I wish I could have spent more time there, but I also had to get to the hotel. And the only hotel I could find was an hour away. Because I was rushing, I didn't eat well. I was eating very poorly. And the last hour I was just dragging as I found my way to the hotel. In heading to the hotel, I passed a number of restaurants that looked like, oh, I should eat here. But I figured if I sat down to eat, I was never gonna get up again to get to the hotel. So I went to the hotel first and then had to force myself to go out and try to find some place to eat. And ended up finding a pretty good dinner. Yesterday was exhausting and compounded with the previous day, there were two hugely exhausting days, about a 28 mile day and a 24 mile day back to back. And the 24 mile a day was up a pretty brutal climb. So uh, I was spent, didn't sleep all that well because I was almost too tired uh, to sleep, uh, but got up for today and headed out. Day 38 started off with something I'd never seen before. Uh, I came to a train stop because a train was going through, like the, the, the gates came down and then the train went through and then stopped right in the middle of the road. And then all of a sudden, after about a minute, the conductor walked all the way to the other end of the train and took it back to the station. I'd never seen that before. So the train was heading out and then went back to the station. And this was about 100 yards out from the station. I've seen train start a little bit and then stop, but they're still pretty much at the platform. This had completely left the station and had to go all the way back for some reason. Don't know why. Most of the day was spent along Highway 11. Uh, part of the highway was wide with nice sidewalk. Part of it was trucks barreling within a couple of feet of me. Uh, a few Henro Pass went through kind of neighborhoods that were a little bit quieter, but uh, basically meandering along the highway 
all day. Early in the morning, I met a guy who I'm just calling Mr. Setai. Uh, he pulled over and been, met up with me at a convenience store. I stopped him to go to the bathroom, and uh, he takes pictures of pilgrims, mostly foreigners, it looked like. He had already met 1,000 foreign pilgrims. Uh, he had done the pilgrimage 50 times, so he carries a Osami Fuda of gold, and he gave me one of his golden uh, Osami Fuda. The people who do it over a hundred times have brocade ones, and they're said to be kind of special talismans. And the hotel I was at uh, two days ago, the owner kind of saw my interest in the pilgrimage and gave me one that he had gotten from a very famous pilgrim, and it was from his 123rd time around the pilgrimage. So Mr. Setai met me at the convenience store. He wanted to buy me a coffee. I kind of said, I just had coffee like 20 minutes ago. So he bought me some bread and then showed me all the pictures of the pilgrims he had met and then asked me to write something for him and then took my picture and it will go into his uh, book. And he has basically broken up his books into pilgrims from which countries and how many from each country. Kind of an interesting uh, fellow. I forgot to mention yesterday at the end of the day, there was a very old man begging pilgrim and I gave him some setai, a few hundred yen. Uh, so hopefully he can make his way around the pilgrimage as well. The stress of the day was being unable to find any place to stay. I hadn't booked out and then today I was calling all the places I wanted to stay today and tomorrow every place is booked. And then I called like the next town over, next city over, and that was all filled up. And then the city after that was filled up. And my lovely wife helped me, like checking online with Rakuten, and she couldn't find any place either. Uh, it's starting to become spring break, and everything is filling up. So I would literally spend about an hour trying to find a place to stay. Part of my problem is that I'm about to hit one temple, three bongai, another temple, and then another bongai, and Several of the temples in Bangai are deep into the mountains, and there are almost no inns deep into the mountains, especially around Bangai, because there are not enough pilgrims going and staying at them. So I imagine you really have to kind of camp if you want to check them out or book that one Bangai that's 20k away uh, early so that you can sort of go from the Bangai to the temple and back. Uh, up until this point, I've only been in a car three times, and each time was to go out to dinner. What I've done is what many Japanese pilgrims do is uh, I went to a bongai today and from the bongai I went to the next station and then I, I was able to book a hotel about 45 minutes by train ride away and I'm actually going to stay here for uh, four nights as I try to hit these bongais and temples. Uh, and then so tomorrow morning I will get on the train and go back to where I, exactly where I left off. Uh, so many pilgrims do this. They take the bus or the train to where they stopped walking and then go to a hotel. Uh, there are a lot of Japanese pilgrims who do a bit at a time. I've met somebody who's trying to finish it in seven years. So each year for one week, they do one segment and then they s start up right where they, they finished. Uh, some pilgrims also use trains to cut out the long parts. I haven't done that. Uh, the inn I actually found, I'm in a town and I called four places before I found this one. They were all booked or probably a third of the numbers I called are uh, no one ans uh, are no longer working numbers, probably because the inn was run by a elderly person or couple who no longer wants to run it and it shut down. Uh, I'm in a nice business hotel, but it is a mile from the station. So my day ended with a mile walk. I visited a bongai and I plan to walk another six miles. And I was just, I'm just too tired and I got to figure out what I want to do. So I went to the station. Uh, the next train was in an hour. I could have walked a station or two, so I had less walking to do tomorrow, but I was just like, I'm just going to sit here and figure out what I'm going to do tomorrow. So tomorrow I'm going to get up early, get on a train, and pick up where I left off. The problem becomes, I'm going to head into the mountains, I'm going to hit one temple, and then a bongai, and then another bongai deep into the mountains, and I'm not sure if I can make it to the third one or not. And I'm not sure how I'm getting out of there, because I can't go in and back. So it's one of these going to go in and then maybe take a bus out or maybe take a taxi out or I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. I'm going to play it by ear a little bit and then the following day pick up from that spot. This is deep in the mountains. There are no real trains, so it's much more uh, head in and then try to figure out how to get out. 
Uh, buses probably only run there three or four times a day, so I got to really look early at, at the bus schedule heading out, or hopefully maybe find a pilgrim who might give me a ride out to at least a train station, and then I can get my way to where I am now. One interesting thing it was at the last temple I was at, there was a bus tour. It was a Bangai temple, so there's a bus tour of Bangai pilgrims visiting it. That was kind of interesting. And then two Shugendo-like husband and wife priest, maybe? He was kind of dressed in the garb of a priest, and she had kind of not pilgrim's clothes, uh, but kind of priestly clothes. Uh, they had giant conch shells that are characteristic of Shugendo people, and they did all sorts of mudras with their fingers and hands. They did all sorts of chanting with bells, and they're blowing the conchs in a different rhythm. Uh, I wanted to film it, but I was reading the sutras when they started to perform their kind of ritual, and then I thought it would be weird to like stop, go grab my camera, and film them. Uh, so I didn't do that, but they were really... Uh, I was kind of fascinated by uh, their practice in front of the temple. It looks like it's getting harder and harder to find places to stay. Uh, after tomorrow, I will then try to book places after that. I might have to do the same sort of thing of book a hotel for three or four nights and then just uh, visit temples and then come back to the, the main hotel. Uh, I'm heading into the final prefecture, Shikoku, Kagawa. It's the smallest prefecture, but there are a ton of temples, so they're all really close together. It's becoming a spring break and spring and cherry blossoms. So from this weekend on, it could be crazy busy. So I definitely want to make sure I have places to stay in the upcoming week.